Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. In this video, I'm going to have a look and give some answers to the common problem of prints coming out too dark. It's got to be one of the most common problems I'm asked about by people when they get into printing. They do various stuff, they come at the prints and they come out too dark. Now, I've got assorted fixes for this, um, some which involve spending some money, some which don't involve spending some money. Simple adjustments, alterations you can make, which hopefully will lower the likelihood of your prints coming out too dark. Now, I still, sometimes when I'm editing images, I'm still not entirely certain how things are going to come out and I do have to do test prints. But in general, I've got my editing and setup in a state that I'm fairly confident that that is not going to be an issue. Now, whether the picture's any good or anything like that, that's an entirely different matter. So, the simplest starting point, and this is the one where you have to spend a bit of money, is to calibrate your screens. Now, this is a screen calibrator. This one's a Calibrite Display Plus HL. Now, this is a simple device, USB device, runs with some software. It hangs in front of the screen when you do the calibration. You don't need to have it connected otherwise. And it measures the brightness of your screen, does a few things, and sets up your screen to a particular brightness level and some other characteristics as well. Now, I've got reviews of this and I've got lots of stuff about this, so I'm not going to go into any detail about calibration here. Suffice to say that if you're serious about it, and certainly because I'm a professional photographer, um, it, it is my business to get stuff right. I don't want to send pictures to other people and then go, why do these look wrong? And it's something as simple as screen calibration. That there are cheaper versions of this. Uh, if you're having, a, if you're thinking of getting one and you're unsure of whether to go for a cheaper version or not, look at the specifications as to what you can do. If the specifications cover features that you have no idea what they are or why you would use them, take that as a big hint that the cheaper one would probably do. Um, there are all sorts of versions of these. I say this is a Calibrite one. This used to be x right I've got lots of that. I've tested loads of these things over the years. Set your screen. Typically, in a, re in a reasonable editing environment, I would set it to a setting of 100 candelas per meter squared. It's, you'll find the units in it as listed. 100 is reasonable. Some people go lower, but if you're going lower, it's probably because you're working in a darker room. Don't work in a completely dark room because the problem then is you, you get glare effects and it affects how you perceive images. It's not a good editing thing to do it in a completely dark room. I know some people do, but there, there, are, there are reasons why that's not an optimal solution for it. So that's the expensive way, calibrating your screen. What other ways are there of improving your editing? Or let's say you've calibrated your screen and you're still getting prints coming out too dark. Happens. There are several other ways. First of all, print a known test image. Now, this particular image here, this is one from Datacolor. Um, I've used it. It's, I've, it's downloadable on my website. I'll put a link in the notes for it, the, the actual image. That's just the multi-panel image there. Now, why do this? What's this got to do with your screen? Well, you print this unadjusted. So you print this as is. Printing this image is testing your printing system. It is nothing to do with your screen setup. Why bother doing that? Well, let's say I print this and it comes out wrong. That tells me that I have something wrong in my editing setup, my print setup, my print software, profile, any of the ways which I choose to print, whatever it is, even if I'm printing off something like an iPad or something like that, not generally to be advised for high quality imaging, but you know, and people do. Um, if, this, if you can't print a copy of this test image, then something is wrong with your test setup, your, your print setup. Now, you're going to have to fix that some other way. And I've, I've covered this in loads of areas. That's the print setup. Let's say that prints fine and your prints of your photos come out too dark. What's going on? Well, your prints are not bright enough, but you think, hang on, they look great on the screen. 
they might look great on the screen. You've calibrated it. It's still, and they're coming out a little bit too dark. What's actually happening here? One simple trick for fixing your editing and changing how you perceive images is to change the background. Now, modern design style has editing, photo editors, with a black dark interface. If you have uh, this image here, tree and some local woodland, I've got a black background on it. That really makes the image jump out. If you want to show an image and make it look good, put it on a black background. But the thing is, when we print, we're not on a black background. We may have a white border. How are you actually going to do this? How can you adjust it? Well, quite simple, really. Um, I actually edit here, and this is on a greyish, neutral grey background I edit on. That means this picture looks, and this is just to me visually, and I cannot necessarily guarantee I can duplicate this in the video, but to me visually, this image has much more contrast. That image look, really jumps out. This image, less so. And I do actually have a version of it with it on a white background. Now, I've cut these into the video and hopefully it makes a bit of a difference on the video if I put the actual images on it. As I, this is the sort of thing I can't guarantee what it looks like until I actually edit the video afterwards. But we have this one here and with a white background, this image looks quite dull. What I would say is that if you are editing on a black background, shift to a gray background. If you're editing on a gray background, shift to a lighter gray background. You can set these backgrounds in uh, settings. I'm using Photoshop here, but you can adjust it. But be very wary of black interfaces on systems. Now I've been, my previous career of mine was user interface design and stuff like that. So I've seen fashions change in interface design as to what is considered good, what is considered not good. And they're often overridden by marketing concerns. Everyone wants dark mode, this sort of stuff. Yeah, that's because it makes your pictures on the screen look great. When you print them out, they don't look quite so great. So that's a, that's a problem there. As you see, this one here, the white background, really, the image just looks a bit dull. One other simple editing trick, which may be of assistance to you. And I used it on this, this particular print here. I did a video about this print. This is down the, this is the River Orwell in Suffolk, near Ipswich, where I come from. And I did this particular shot and I used it to look at various aspects of editing. However, I first printed it on a luster paper. And then I decided that I didn't like the tonal range of the luster paper. I printed it on this matte paper. And this one's rather nice. And the, and the print has the feel I want for it. Now, classic way of setting up your levels for printing if you're not sure. Now, these, like all rules, can be changed as you see fit, but it's helpful, can be helpful to start at this point. In your editing, you go to a simple levels adjustment. Now, this is the most, you can do this in Photoshop elements and thing. Basically, you make sure that the blackest part of the image is black. The whitest part of the image is white. Now, you might, because your papers want to drop that white a little bit, but yeah, effectively, you expand the image to fit the available size. And that's a simple levels adjustment. One other bit on the levels adjustment is there is a midpoint. You can move that midpoint and make the whole picture a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. It turns out that in normal viewing lighting, you shouldn't really, if you've got things set up, and you've edited it carefully, you shouldn't really need to make an adjustment like this. But if you are getting a particular image where you want it brighter 
or darker, you can just adjust that midpoint. And I say, this is a very simple editing adjustment. Almost any editing tools has a feature, something like this. And that's a way to adjust things. Why might you want to adjust it rather than just go through the proper way of doing everything like this and with test images and everything? Why might you want to adjust it? Well, it depends on the viewing lighting for the print. Now, I'll be coming back in another video to viewing lighting for prints because it's an entirely different subject and stuff. But if you view your prints under dim household lighting, and it's not very bright lighting, you will need to bump up the brightness of the prints. It's just how we see things. Likewise, adjusting everything here to make it correct, as it were, on here, produces prints that look great in normal, decent lighting. Look at them in bright lighting, the prints might look a bit bright. Look at them in dim lighting, the prints, guess what? They're gonna look a bit dark. But that's all sorts of extra subtleties there, which you probably don't need. And you know, um, I've covered the key points there. So first of all, try calibrating your screen. Do a test print, because if your printer is set up wrong, you can edit and tweak things as much as you like, but if your printer isn't printing correctly, then all that effort is pretty much wasted. And I say, think of the cheaper ways of doing it as well. Think about your background on your screen, the difference between these two here. Um, if you're unsure, try it yourself, uh, however you edit things. Try changing some things like that and see how it looks. Anyway, I hope that's been of help. Thanks to the person who asked me about this aspect of printing again. Um, so it's something I've covered before, and I put links to various other stuff in the notes to this. But... Um, Thanks for watching. Hope that's been of use. Um, if you did find it of use, please do pass the channel on to anybody else. And um, all the usual, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.